Thank you so much for staying tuned to Citizen TV. It's now 27 minutes to 7 o'clock. My name is Sam Gituko and I want to start by introducing the panelists we have here in studio. We have uh, the Member of Parliament for Kitutu Church South, uh, <laughs> Richard Onyonka. I almost said Senator Richard Onyonka. <laughs> and on this other side, we have uh, Senator Sylvia Kasanga, who is a nominated senator from the Oipa Party. Thank you Good so Good morning, much. both of you. Yeah. We're also joined virtually by Senator Samson Charagay from Nandi County. And Senator, how have you been? We have not seen you in a very long time. What have you been up to? Uh, Sam, uh, I've been keeping well and uh, we thank God. I've been here and about. Mm -hmm. All is well. Uh, all just pushing the, the bottom up. <laughs> Indeed, and we'll be talking about that later on. But uh, this morning, I want us to focus on several matters, including a devolution scorecard, looking at uh, what has transpired over the past um, uh, nine or so years, since 2012, when the first uh, funds for the counties were located. We'll, we'll also be joined by the governor of Nakuru, Lee Kinyanju, as soon as he's able to make it here, we'll bring him on the conversation. But first, looking at the papers, on the front page of the standard, there are two top stories at the top. Um, well, actually, at the Daily Nation, uh, that is Ruto. I will win State House race in first round. Uh, give us DP slot. Western tells Ryla. Of course, you can see the clamor for the positions. One Kenya Alliance is saying we are not in talks with the deputy president. And of course, uh, they are saying that um, they will want to go uh, through the race until the last minute. Uh, then, on the front page of the standard, Oka Chiefs, we are united to the end. Um, well, again, a same or similar statement there uh, as what the delineation has captured. Then you'll see state of devolution, the hits and misses, as Makoni County hosts the seventh devolution, uh, the seventh annual devolution conference beginning tomorrow. We take stock of how far we have come as a country and the expectations, and that's a story that we'll look at later on from pages eight to nine. And of course, the latest action on what has happened to the Manchester United um, top manager, um, Oleguna, the last name we will not say here. Uh, it's best said by people who know how to say it. But looking at uh, another story here on COVID situation, that um, you will be required to have a COVID certificate, no, no COVID job, forget government services next year. Uh, that's the statement coming from the Ministry of Health. The Cabinet Secretary, uh, Mutahi Kagwe, made that statement yesterday and saying that uh, the children between 15 and above, or from 15 above, can now access the COVID-19 vaccines, specifically Pfizer for the younger ones. Uh, Senator Kasanga, looking at what a war we have staged against COVID-19 since March, was it 13th or yes. 2020, to where we are now, uh, several vaccinations, especially of the first jab, more than 5 million now, uh, saying that at least 7% of the adult population have now been vaccinated. The target still remains at 10 million. Um, the ministry says that they are confident by the end of the year we'll get to that. What are you thinking when you hear that now, uh, starting uh, at least January next year, if, you, if you've not been vaccinated, you cannot be offered services? I think my only concern would be that the government must make sure then there are enough COVID jabs in that case, because of course you will see a surge of Kenyans now going after it. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to give it to the government that they have really tried when it comes to COVID, given all the circumstances, given the challenges in accessing the vaccines, that we have such goodwill from our, our friends and our business partners uh, globally, that we've been able to get the COVID jabs that we have gotten, is really something that we have to be grateful for as a, as a nation. Mm -hmm. And that the government has kept those relationships going is also wonderful, because there are countries that are really, really suffering uh, today. So I'd say that it's a good step in the right place. Mm -hmm. I know there's still a lot of apathy towards the COVID jab, especially in the rural areas. It's still a big problem. Getting people to come out and you know voluntarily take the jab has been a challenge. And the few jabs that are there should actually be taken up quite quickly, such that then the government has to look for others. So my only hope is that as they put this um, directive into place, they also have you know, they also have to make sure they have enough jobs mm -hmm. that are going to be then accessible should they run out of what they have and Kenyans are looking towards getting more services from the government. Mm -hmm. That is the only thing I can tell you for now. But really the scorecard, you can rate them actually quite well when it comes to how they have really tried to make sure they have access to these jobs 
and have reticulated them and disseminated them into the counties. I can tell you, like in Makweni, the drives are really big, they're big, they're good. I know part of it was because of this uh, devolution conference that was supposed to happen last year. So the drives were increased mm -hmm. so that we can have as many citizens of Makweni uh, receive the jab so that okay. we don't get a surge of, uh, of COVID. In, in that area. So that has been managed well from our end. Mm -hmm. But of course, when you look at Western Kenya, you have you cause to worry. Because again, the numbers there we hear have really gone up. And the uptake of COVID jobs has not been very good in the Western region. And yet you can see all the politics that is now happening, all the activity mm -hmm. is not going to help the situation. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, pushing Kenyans to take the job, um, almost forcing them, I think is necessary at this point in time, considering next year is full political activity. So, mm -hmm. and we have to manage the situation. You know, COVID is still there. In fact, if you look at Europe, the numbers have really surged in Europe. It's actually a serious situation. Uh, in the Americas as well, the numbers are still very high. So COVID is still here. Right. And it is important that we push Kenyans now uh, mm -hmm. to make sure they take the job <coughs> when it is available. And Senator, I don't know how you, you're receiving the news um, and how well you're faring in uh, Nandi County. I'll be looking at some numbers here shortly just to see how far you were as of some time last week. But what, what do you make of that directive? Isn't it, isn't it a form of discrimination knowing that um, the vaccine essentially was supposed to be voluntary? Now you say that uh, without it, you cannot access certain services. Uh, uh, thank you, Sam. I, I think from where I sit is that, um, of course, every Kenyan knows that to safely reopen the country, we must uh, ensure a great percentage are vaccinated. And therefore, it will improve on what we call herd immunity as the health expert in state. In uh, Nandi County, we are faring well. And in fact, uh, we have been beneficiaries of the national vaccination program. But of course, there has been a slow uptake of the vaccine. Of course, my sister, <coughs> Senator Kasanga, has attributed to many factors, including uh, stereotypes, societal uh, apprehension, issues of uh, vaccination and misinformation. But I think the government and the Ministry of Health should have done more by educating Kenyans uh, why they should be taking vaccine and why it is important that all Kenyans must take vaccine. Mm -hmm. Now that we uh, containment measures were lifted, like curfew, issues of uh, restricting number of people attending the, the functions, public functions, funerals, political rallies, and also opening of schools, public places. So I think um, we all agree that it's important, but it is very unfortunate that the same government is also insisting that uh, if they told us by December, uh, they would be having 10 million Kenyans vaccinated. So it means there is a problem in terms of accessibility to vaccine. And uh, in speaking of the rights, uh, right to health and many other factors and looking at the constitution, of course, to mandatory uh, force people to take vaccine, I, I think, the, in my own opinion, is illegal and it's very unfortunate in this time and time because you don't just order people. You, you give the reason to why people should be vaccinated. You have seen even as the Germany and other Europe countries, the surge is going up. You, uh, uh, you uh, of the COVID cases across Europe and even uh, a number of uh, North America or any other part of the world, mm -hmm. even introducing mandate of wearing masks out, outdoors, uh, you need legislation, you need the reason to why you have seen even uh, a lot of uh, resistance and uh, the street demonstration, uh, demonstrations in uh, Europe. So we wouldn't want to go that direction, but my advice to the government <clears throat> is that they should be more focused on uh, educating Kenyans as to why they need for literally to take a vaccine. But I agree that we need that vaccine to be accessible because uh, maybe the government has not received number of jobs that is enough because we are not doing very well. December is approaching. We are told the world that the Ministry of Health has told us that we have to be vaccinated. So, so I think that is, that is what is very important. And also the government must also provide with other measures to, for containment, uh, like uh, ensuring that the uh, PPEs are provided with the, to the doctors and the uh, issues of masks, issues of sanitization, mm -hmm. issues of uh, ensuring that Kenyans uh, are still protected from the COVID. But also, finally, is of course, you can see politically now the country is charged. I think it is very important to work with also political actors because, uh, so that they can discuss with their supporters as to why it is important, as opposed as forcing them. Because the issue of saying you can't have certificate, I know they are trying to do what Europe and America is doing, 
but that is not the correct direction. From, from, from the nature of Kenyans, I can tell you uh, it will not be, it will be a tall order for government to, right. to, you know, you are now opening another avenue of uh, corruption because you remember when Kapi were introduced, there were many allegations that the, the other enforcement agencies were using that opportunity to do extortion and many others. So it is also another avenue of uh, corruption if we are not careful. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, and Honorable Onyonka, so as you reflect on this, and I know it's a good thing to, to have as many people vaccinated as possible so that uh, you protect the entire population, but where does it fall when it comes to matters of the rights and the, the human rights uh, that uh, you should be free to access any government service without being discriminated against because of a certain vaccine that you haven't gotten? What does government need to do to make this legal? Uh, First of all, good morning, Sam. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm happy to be here with my <laughs> former member of parliament before he became governor, uh, uh, Governor Lee Kinyanjui, and our sister Asanga. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wanted to just mention two things. To a large extent, other than the blemish of having uh, the problem of uh, KEMSA, mm -hmm. I think, to a large extent, the current government has succeeded in um, controlling the COVID-19 pandemic. It could have been worse. You see, Sam, what happens in our country, mm -hmm. um, normally we never great, give anybody credit when they do well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I was seeing this morning somebody screaming and saying how these individuals who uh, escaped from prison. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a scam and everything. I wish whoever that was speaking that knew how those individuals were arrested. When we try as a country, we really do well. I think under the issue of COVID-19 management, uh, the government has quite succeeded in making sure that it has managed the spread. Uh, the government has actually gone beyond, you know, there is this uh, new culture that has come up of uh, the anti-vaxxers, the people who believe in conspiracy theories that when you take the vaccine, there is some, something that is going to be put in your blood and everything. Mm -hmm. The truth is the vaccines work. I have personally been vaccinated. I've gotten two of my jabs. And we hope that uh, Mutai Kagwe, who is quite serious, will make sure that the implementation... In fact, I was, I was vaccinated at, uh, at um, Mbagadi. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Nairobi Hospital or any other. The, my first job was in Parliament, and the second one I was at Mbagadi. And they just sent me an SMS. Mm -hmm. And I drove there, and I didn't get any resistance. I queued like everybody else. And I was injected, and that was it. So I think we've done quite well. Right. Uh, why we have not achieved the 10 million number that was raised initially, or was stated by Mutai, I think this is a new exercise. This is something that I'm not talking on behalf of the government. I'm just looking at its practicality right. and what in reality has been happening. But largely, we've not um, been uh, a, a, a failed state that has been unable to handle its, its people's uh, health issues. I think I, I commend uh, <coughs> Minister Mutai Kagwe, and he has done quite, quite a bit, and the whole of his team. But, but on the question about um, this may be interpreted to be yes. discrimination in accessing government services. I, I will come there. The, 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 the second issue I'm raising, I, I, of course, somebody's going to go to court. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know how Kenyans we have become. The question we should be asking ourselves, the person who's not willing to take a vaccine, their rights are protected, yes. But what about my rights for me, who is willing to take the vaccine? Mm -hmm. And I, I think these are issues that we love to grapple with. Um, if for me, the government actually gave a condition and the government encouraged Kenyans, or rather, uh, I'm twisted with soft power to make Kenyans um, get vaccinated so that they can get services and everything, so be it, because we need to vaccinate our people. Mm -hmm. The truth is, we're <coughs> assuming right now, because the numbers of the people who are dying and who are affected by the, the, the COVID-19 um, 
illness, mm -hmm. uh, we may be looking at it and thinking it's okay. I mean, there isn't much happening and therefore Kenyans are right. No, the truth is we need to vaccinate as many Kenyans as we can so that at least the reason why the 10 million number is always being raised some is because there is the argument of herd immunity that after you vaccinated a certain number, then this number will begin to build its natural immunity. Mm -hmm. And as a result, then you will have the people infected with the disease going down and therefore they will have their deaths decreasing. Right. I hope that there will be a middle ground. I hope like in the US, you remember there was an issue where the US president actually issued an executive order of having all government officers and the courts came up and made a ruling against that and said the court said no. Uh, yes, you can re re create those conditions. If somebody doesn't want to be vaccinated, they can then be given what they need to fulfill so right. that they don't go in infecting other people. Okay. Yes. And welcome, uh, Governor Likinyanji from Nakuru County. And we are talking about um, the latest announcement by the Minister of Health on what will happen should you not be vaccinated in accessing government services. I'm looking at the numbers in Nakuru County as of 9th of November. You had vaccinated, fully vaccinated okay. up to 93,000. That's against a, an adult population of 1.27 million. So that's a percentage of 7.3 percent and Nakuru is actually one of the best performing if you had to look at uh, the absolute numbers. What has been the challenge and how are you receiving this news because majority of our population is not vaccinated. Now you're saying that uh, they will not be accessing services uh, in these government facilities. Well I, I think it's good to confirm that um, before the onset of this vaccination there were a lot of challenges surrounding uh, theories and counter theories on how the vaccine would be of uh, serious danger to all of us. Mm -hmm. And because uh, the Kenyan population is not generally uh, very well informed, many of them bought into some of these theories. But I think the role of the state is to protect its citizens. Mm -hmm. I think that's the cardinal role of any government. And therefore, the rules given uh, by Mutai Kago on behalf of the government uh, must be followed by everyone, and in my view, also uh, taken up by the private sector. In other countries today, if you want to book into a hotel, uh -huh. you must have this COVID vaccine. So if you make it impossible for those who have not been vaccinated to have their normal life, including banking services, because if you're going to be a danger to other people, then it means that they will not go far. If you do it that way, we can shoot from that maybe 7 8% to about 20% by January. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can imagine the embarrassment of having vaccinations uh, expire in our stores while you are at 7% vaccination. So the, the government must do what is necessary uh, to protect its people. Then secondly is to confirm that in other parts of the world, uh, especially in Europe today, countries are going on shutdown. And uh, there's a very clear connection between countries with a high percentage of vaccination and those that are low. Uh, for example, today I think Austria is on a lockdown, complete lockdown. So although the wave is not high currently in Kenya today, I think it would be very wrong for us to forget that it may well come, say, in January. Mm -hmm. And the pattern has been when the wave is high in those countries, including in Asia and Europe, in a month or two it comes. So it is possible to project that maybe by late January or something like that, that will be the case in Kenya. So where will we be? So the government is acting in the best interest of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, we need also to look at the cost of shutting down the economy is too expensive for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And the problem with the state is <coughs> if you do, people complain. If you don't, the same Kenyans mm -hmm. will be out there criticizing <coughs> you. So, so what has been the bigger challenge in Akuru? Because the country has about, has received a, uh, just over 9 million doses of vaccines. What has been the bigger challenge in Nakuru? Is it uh, supply of these vaccines or it's uh, the uptake? I would say it's the uptake. And uh, what we've done is actually to go now to the villages, uh, to you know, smallest health centers and market centers and make sure that we give, especially to the older persons. Uh -huh. But the state has done a lot in terms of availing the vaccine. The issue is the demand by the citizens. Uh -huh. So you will go to a village with 5,000 people, you take the vaccine and only 50 people show up. So I think the problem is actually at the people level, not at the state level. Okay. All right. Very interesting uh, feedback here. And um, Senator Kasanga, so now uh, for Mark Wayne, I'm looking at the numbers. 22,000 as of 9th of November were fully vaccinated. Of course, the number is different uh, for the partially vaccinated, but you have a target of 584,000. 
um, adult population, and you're saying that there's been efforts to raise these numbers uh, as you prepare for the devolution conference. Are the challenges the same as Nakuru, the uptake, not necessarily the supply? Yes, actually, that is it. Like I had mentioned earlier, it's a lot to do with the uptake and still a lot of apathy out there when it comes to the COVID uh, vaccine. What the Honorable Nyonka was, was talking about is real. And you see, the county government now is going village to village. They're actually going out to the people, mm -hmm. literally, talking about it and trying to encourage them to take it. So I, I am for the push that uh, you know, we need to nudge Kenyans a little, a little more so that we can have this uptake taken. And mm -hmm. you see, like I said earlier, the efforts to get the vaccines is commendable that our friends and partners in, in the country globally mm -hmm. are willing to support us to that extent, knowing how difficult it is to get these vaccines in this day and time. So I think it's time that, uh, you know, let's support the government on this one. Let's get our citizens vaccinated as much as possible. Let us not see ourselves going back into a lockdown because next year the political activity, already as you can see, in fact, before the year ends, there'll be much more heightened political activity. Mm -hmm. So we need to protect Kenyans to that extent. Okay, of course, mm. heightened uh, political activity. And before we transition to the next topic, I want us to take a short break here. Mm -hmm. So that when we come back, we'll be talking about the devolution um, scorecard. We know that tomorrow the country goes to Makueni to uh, mark uh, that uh, devolution conference to have a conversation about how far we've come. We'll also be looking at what the theme is and the progress that has been made because we have uh, two senators, we have a governor and a member of the National Assembly. Stay tuned. Text in your views via 2242. And uh, you can tweet at Citizen TV Kenya at Samgituku. The hashtag to use is the break. <laughs> 